tonight we are Hebrews chapter 11 and we're going to look at three verses, verses 20 to 22, chapter 11 verses 20 to 22. Uh, Paul, would you please read those? Mm -hmm. Thanks. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Super. All right, well, let's go through these verses one by one. And in verse 20, we've read there that by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. It's a great tale, isn't it, in Genesis chapter 25 of how that came about. Uh, as you recall, Isaac had twin sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau was Isaac's favourite. Why was he the favourite? Well, he was the firstborn. Although they were twins, he was the one to, uh, to be born first. But for Rebecca, it was something different. And we'll see why if we look at Genesis chapter 25 and verse 23. It appears that Rebecca favoured, if that's the right terminology, I don't know, favoured or prioritised in some sense her son Jacob. And in verse 23 of chapter 25, this is what it says. That the Lord said unto her, so this is the Lord speaking to Rebecca, the wife of Isaac. And he says this, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Yeah? Upside down to the expectation that the firstborn should be over any, any uh, siblings thereafter. But in, according to this, the elder should serve the younger. Now, how would that play out? How would that actually happen? Well, um, we're told as we read on in verses 32 and 33, after uh, Esau had sold his birthright for pottage, whatever that is, you know what pottage is? According to my uh, uh, glossary on the, on the side, it's soup or stew. Okay? So for mere soup or stew, he, sold, he sells his birthright. But then we have a question as to what's going to happen in terms of blessing. Because if his father, Isaac, uh, blesses... Esau, then will he still receive that birthright? Well, in chapter 27, later on, we learn that uh, he dresses up in animal skin because Esau is a hairy man. That is, Isaac does. And um, we read in verses 32 and 33, And Isaac, his father, said unto him, so he's now thinking, who is this? <laughs> Remember the story. Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. But something didn't sit right with him. Okay, No, he's not so sure. And then he realises he's been tricked. And he says, well, let's just look what happens. Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And have eaten all of all before thou camest, and have blessed him. So he's talking of Esau, where is he? And then he says, yes, and he shall be blessed. Now it seems in that moment that there was a sense of, oh, here, reading between the lines, here I have been almost thwarting God's plans. Um, 
but he knows about Rebecca's um, promise from the Lord, which is that it's the opposite way around, that the blessing should come to the younger. And in that moment, maybe he's trembling because he's been sinning, he's been thwarting the plans of God, and now, in this magnificent way, really, he's been tricked, and the blessing has gone to whom? It's gone to Jacob. What lesson is there for us? Well, um, God's plans can't be thwarted. Yeah? You can try, but you can't fool God, can you? Whatever he says shall come to pass. If anything, this gives us a sense of assurance, doesn't it? That when life is difficult and it appears that all is going against us and we're believers, actually hang on in there because God will get us through. God's plans shall come to pass. God will win out in the end. Proverbs 19 verse 21 says it succinctly. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Okay? So, with respect to certain promises of God, uh, certain promises that you feel you're going to, you should be inheriting at some point because <coughs> you're in Christ Jesus, but you feel as if mm, they're, they're they're, they're not work, doesn't working out for me. I mean, I don't seem to be reaching the place that I thought I would be in Christ. Well, give it time, even if the time ultimately <coughs> means that we uh, shuffle off this mortal coil and, uh, and go to be with the Lord, because c come what may, uh, as long as we're in faith and we're believing and we're walking in holiness, you know, all of that stuff, uh, then... We're secure, aren't we, in God? We're secure in Him. Okay, so something to think about. Also, verse 21 now of chapter 11. Uh, by faith, Jacob, uh, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. So often chieftains or head of families would have a staff. So it is this symbol of authority. And there he is, when he is, he is dying, it says, blessing both the sons of Joseph. Get a bit of um, background to that. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 48. We'll see here Joseph uh, blessing his uh, progeny in verse 16 of chapter 48. The angel which redeemed me from all evil bless the lads. <laughs> and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. So he knows the blessing of old. It's come through uh, Abraham and Isaac, and there is that recapitulation, and he actually says, let them grow. He's blessing them into the multitude uh, that he believes uh, they will become. Similarly, in verse 21, and Israel said unto Joseph, notice Israel is another name that he was the remember for, for, for Jacob. Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you, 
and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Incredible faith, especially when you think that um, there would be some time, hundreds of years indeed, before they would leave Egypt and settle in Israel. Okay, so it's a long way off. Uh, but Jacob has faith in the promise and he's sure that it will come to pass. Interesting enough, he goes as far to say, as far as to say, did you look, notice that in verse 21 of Hebrews 11? What does he want them to take with, with them? Not in verse 21, I'm talking about in um, oh no, I've got that mixed up with the next one. Don't worry, don't worry, you will, you'll see when, when I come to it. Um, the main issue I think about this particular verse is. <clears throat> Uh, what are you standing on? You know we spoke earlier about um, about not thwarting God's plans and it shall come to pass. With Jacob um, and his, his faith that he can bless, Jacob, despite being centuries away from the fulfilment of that, is able to do that because, as we said earlier, he hears it, he knows it by the word of the Lord, which has come through Abraham and Isaac also. And we sing, standing on the promises, don't we? Heard that? Standing, standing on the promises. Um, and it's so important to be to be standing on the word of God and rooted in that because uh, for example in this case Jacob uh, not seeing more than his family before him may have thought well what is happening here is it going to happen think to him that himself um, We're meant to be a great nation, but frankly, uh, there's a handful of us, relatively speaking. And that's when feelings get in the way of the unalterable and sure word of God, which is very different. Okay, Now, God, we're told, doesn't lie, does he? Um, what he says, as I said earlier, will come to pass. But all too often, we can end up focusing on the subjective thoughts and feelings we have about certain things, um, as Jacob could have done, um, and overlook that we've got surety, and it's here. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's very important when we have uh, negative thoughts that maybe question um, uh, or, or yeah, make us subject to doubt about certain things or maybe it's just uh, other emotional issues <coughs> that can affect our stability uh, like uh, our assurance uh, about whether we're saved about whether um, <coughs> uh, we still are uh, right with God and so forth. It's very important to have a reservoir of verses to hand that speak otherwise, that actually speak truth mm. to that, against that, that counter it. <coughs> That's why people say, you know, memorize verses. But I think better still, if you are coming across, you know, s certain. Uh, troubling thoughts or feelings uh, in your life then address each one if they are recurring to you address each one with a biblical verse that speaks out the truth the truth of God not 
the truth of your feelings because your feelings aren't truth. It's been said, in fact, that feelings are gauges, not guides. You see that? Gauges in the sense that they tell you maybe about how you, f you are in, in terms of your emotion at a particular point, but they shouldn't guide you because they're not facts and they can't d dictate to you about a certain matter, especially if, for example, you're sleep deprived or have had too much caffeine or whatever it is, uh, we know what that's like. We can be thinking all sorts of uh, crazy stuff. Um, uh, that's why 1 Peter 5 verse 8, uh, Peter says that we need to be sober minded. That is, to that is, we need to ch take charge of these uh, and uh, marshal them. We hear often in our Bible study about taking every thought captive uh, to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's just something to, to do practically if that is an issue for you. Because some people do worry about their salvation. <coughs> no, they worry about... Uh, <coughs> all manner of things related to uh, um, their walk with the Lord. Um, a classic example would be, have I committed the unforgivable sin? Have I blasphemed against the Spirit? Um, uh, can I be forgiven of my sin? Well, go to God's Word. Go, for example, to First John, where it says, if any man should sin, oh. You know, we have the Advocate Father, and we, you know, we can be forgiven. So it's, um, it's something practically uh, that you might want to, to put into action if that's uh, an issue for you. Finally, verse 22, By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones. Sorry, this is where I got slightly confused earlier. Alright, so, Genesis 50, verse 25. Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So there it is, a third blessing. We've looked at uh, two others. Here we now come down to Joseph, and God will surely visit you, he says. And he's so confident, and this is where I got confused with, um, with Jacob, two J's then, that's probably what it is. Um, he says, carry up my bones. All right? So it's going to be a long way off. Yes. But he's so sure of it, it's as if, you know, when I'm gone, you can still take me, even in my coffin, whatever, or whatever it is they had, they had them in those days, and uh, I'll be with you in the, in the promised land. In... Uh, in the land that God has promised to us, take me up there. It is almost you could you imagine whether um, he expects a resurrection to take place uh, there. You know he's so confident of it. It's incredible uh, that he'll rise up at some point in the future uh, in the promised uh, promised land. Well, I think that's pretty incredible that level of faith. As I said earlier, um, like f for the other uh, f for the other men of faith, this was hundreds of years off into the future. Um, but he's certain, and he's certain too that uh, death is no barrier. Um, you know, it's interesting. There's a running theme here about these blessings that they are taking place uh, at the time of when of ones of their uh, dying or death. Um, and yet he's certain about this uh, this grand future. We talked a bit earlier about assurance. One of the fears of some is what about death or dying? What's going to happen? 
when I die, you know. Some people get very worried about this. Um, will I get there? You know, will I see the Lord? Um, again, this is about having the kind of faith uh, that these great men had. The kind of faith, in this case, that Joseph had. Which is a certainty regarding the eschaton. Regarding the future. Regarding end of life and that is that it is just um, being absent from this life but being present with the Lord that's what Paul says it is simply a change isn't it it's a step into a different dimension that's all it is um, and also we have to be standing on the promises and the promise is very clear isn't it that Jesus has overcome death, okay? That we might share in his resurrection, okay? And another good verse, this is our final verse tonight, on that subject of death, what happens to believers when they die? Where have they gone? Or where are we going, you know, as, uh, as people of faith? Well, early on in Hebrews we read this, uh, Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2 and verses 14 and 15. <clears throat> For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death, notice, there's an acknowledgement for unbelievers, that there's a fear of death, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage, a bondage of sin and a bondage of fear of what is going to happen, of judgment, yeah, of oblivion but no we have victory in Jesus Christ and he's destroyed that power of death and destroyed the devil in the east they say something they say he has trampled down death by death it's a lovely phrase trampling down death by death by his own death on the cross the atonement amazing that he's able to take death into death itself. Do you see how that works? He puts to death, death. So it's done. Death has died. If you're in Christ, and you will gain a resurrection. It's incredible. So you can see humans and our frailty are subject to all manner of worrying thoughts about stuff like this aren't they even as a believer from time to time unless you are some incredible saint um, I think you're also going to encounter um, on occasion uh, some doubts or maybe some questions about such things have an armory of scripture and remember these things note them down okay uh, Commit them to memory, you see, and they can they can uh, flush out any of these uh, troubling thoughts related to our walk with the Lord, to to, to spirituality that might indeed be uh, uh, you know temptations of the devil. It's the sort of thing he does, isn't it? And remember that it's all sewn up. Yeah, God has got it sorted. And uh, we know this, this to be true because we have history to prove it. And so if we go back to those men, the likes of uh, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, was there in Israel? Did they enter the Promised Land? Did they leave Egypt? Of course they did. 
I mean, it may not be um, a spiritual state, it may be rightly called, called a secular state, but on the map today, you will find a place called Israel. And there's plenty of archaeological proof that uh, the people, the Jews, were there and had that land all that time ago. And so it came to pass. And so, for the faithful, it shall come, come to pass too. Do we just leave it there?